Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. I'm here with head librarian Keith Moore. We have a bounty of objects here for you today, including a box, and you know we love opening a big wooden box. Keith, who are we talking about today? We're talking about a topic close to your heart, Australia, and uh, particularly Morris Young, who's a fellow of the Royal Society, a uh, marine biologist, and someone who led an expedition to Australia in the 1920s to the Great Barrier Reef. So the Great Barrier Reef, this famous natural phenomenon in Queensland, Australia, and this is where he made his name, this is where he did his most famous work. And not just him, the other expedition members, uh, they were very young at the time, uh, but they became themselves quite leading scientists and eventually like young fellows of the Royal Society. Let's start with this folder here, Keith, because mm. I understand this sort of sets the scene a little bit of the science they were doing at the Great Barrier Reef. That's right. So this is, uh, you can see C.M. Young, a leader of the expedition, which was 1928 to 1929. Uh, and this is a summary of everything that went on. So the, the finance, the boats they used, uh, the excursions they did, the scientific uh, equipment, everything summarised in that one paper. There's the full contingent. Is our man there? Yep, so this is the Low Islands and we can see lots and lots of different people here. C.M. Yong is just here. Oh, here we go. We have a, an overhead shot of a bit of reef. I mean, obviously, a mere YouTube video will never do justice to all of the science in these documents here, but this is just to give you all a feel. Oh, look at that. Got a boat there. Mm -hmm. The Luana. Well, we, we need to do a follow-up video on location, I think, Brady. Yeah? We'll yeah, think, I uh, think so. Yeah. We'll th you think the Society will send you and I to the Great Barrier Reef? Why not? <laughs> I think they won't. It's, it's an object, kind <laughs> of. <laughs> There's a map of the Great Barrier Reef for those of you who don't know where it is. Lots of great papers, pictures, documents. Come along to the Royal Society sometime, people, and Keith will get this out for you. I like this one. This looks like a holiday brochure. It, it does, doesn't it? Tapping the wealth of the Great Barrier Reef. And of course, they're, they're very interested in the coral, the marine life, the ecosystems there. Look at this. This is lovely, this document. I love this. I mean, for a marine biologist, the Great Barrier Reef is like, that's as good as it gets. And by the way, people, if you don't believe that he went there, we've got his passport. Yeah. <laughs> now, interestingly, we can see there, it is cancelled, but we can see there Dr. Charles Morris Yong, accompanied by his wife, of course, because back in these days, if you had a wife, she was on the same she passport. She would be on the same passport, yeah, yeah. But this is particularly interesting because his wife was also a very accomplished scientist and was on his expeditions to the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, I mean, one of the interesting things about this expedition is precisely that it had quite a few women involved as marine biologists. And this is a period when uh, it was difficult for women to have a scientific career, but uh, several of the members of the expedition went on to become fellows of the Royal Society. So there's Martha Young. We'll see some more pictures of her shortly. And I know what you're all asking. Where is the smoking gun stamp? There it is. Look at that, going into Australia, Customs Department, Sydney, Australia, 29 August, 1929. So he's in Australia. Just a quick break for a second, people. We will be opening this box shortly, I promise. We will be opening the box. <laughs> So I mentioned some of the women on the expedition there and we've got some newspaper cuttings here and you can see even at the time it was quite a big thing. A lot of the press cuttings feature the young scientists who were on the expedition. So here we have four of the party. From the left, Mrs T.A. Stevenson, Mrs F.S. Russell, Mrs C.M. Young and below Miss S.M. Marshall. Sheena Marshall who eventually became a fellow of the Royal Society. So this is at a time where having a number of women in the expedition is still a bit of a novelty. You can really tell from yeah. the press coverage that we've got, you know, look at this, Mrs. C.M. Young arrived with Dr. Young in Australia recently. So having a, having a woman in the party there is something that is of real interest to the newspapers at the time. Mm. This is a whole bunch of clippings, obviously, that the family collected. They were, pretty, they were pretty pleased whenever they got a bit of press coverage, obviously. Scientists as Crusoes. Because they, they had to, to live on the reef, of course, and do, do their work there. And woman doctor, mm -hmm. bold. <laughs> well, we mentioned Morris Young is a fellow of the Royal Society, was a fellow of the Royal Society. Mm -hmm. uh, this is his certificate of a candidate for election. I always find it interesting to see how these great scientists have their 
life works summarised in just a yeah. few sentences. So by this stage, this is 1946, uh, Yong is Professor of Zoology at the University of Glasgow, and it says, leader of the Great Barrier Reef Expedition, 1928-29. That's the first thing they, they say about him. It's a Birek expedition. Distinguished for his researches on the feeding, digestion, and assimilation of marine animals, especially mollusca, but including also crustacea, tunicata, and corals. So there we go. That's a summary of his work. And we see these are all the other fellows who have sort of signed off and said, yep, he's the real yeah, deal. That's right. And, and Russell here was a member of this expedition. So he's signing one for another of the party. And we can see on the next certificate election, which is for Sheena Marshall, who's one of the young women on the expedition. She later becomes a fellow of the Royal Society. So this is quite late. This is the 1960s. She's elected in 1963. And here we can see C.M. Young as one of the signatories supporting her election. Right. So he was there first hand to know what great work she was doing. Exactly right. And we see here in her write-up. Distinguished for her researches on the productivity of the sea, especially in collaboration with Dr. A.P. Ott. As a biologist, she has contributed to our knowledge of the plankton in temperate and tropical seas. There you go. She's in. Fantastic. We've kept people in suspense for a while. Keith, what's in the box? Well, this is Yong's microscope. Oh, yeah, now that is what a microscope is supposed to look like. Standard field instrument for the period. Okay. You've got some little lenses there. So the manufacturing company, you can see just on, the, on here, it's Hawksley. I believe they're still making microscopes, actually. They've been doing it since the 19th century, so it's one of the long-established uh, instrument-making companies. We've got the mirror here down the bottom to mm -hmm. reflect light, so if you're in the field, you can tilt this around to get your, your light up underneath your sample. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Nothing much can go wrong with it. You've got a swivel choice of, of lens there. That's pretty much it. Fantastic. I mentioned Mrs. T.A. Stevenson in the press cuttings. Mr. T.A. Stevenson, Thomas Stevenson, was a fellow of the Royal Society. And I think he's one of the best marine biology artists of the 20th century. He illustrated books and they're fantastically beautiful. We have one of them here. This is his work on British uh, marine life. Is that a painting? Life. That's a painting. Well, it's, a, it's a photograph yeah. of a painting, so okay. it's, a, it's an illustration. But you can see the kind of colour and level of detail he's getting on some of these things. That's nice. Probably using a simple microscope like Yong's for some of this material. Lovely. But we do have two original works here. So these are the watercolours that would have eventually been photographed and, and used as this kind of illustration. And if I just turn this one over, we can see paintings by Thomas Allen Stevenson. And this is Coral, Colony of Fungi. So Stevenson and his wife and Yong and his wife were both Expedition. It was just like a holiday, members. all these couples going on a holiday. Oh, they, they worked hard, come on. <laughs> Fair enough. They weren't faffing about making a couple of YouTube videos. That's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess if you're going to go away for that long, it's pretty helpful if your, your partner can come too and do science. Exactly right, yeah. yeah. There we go. So there's one of the pictures, and here is the other one. I'll see if I see what it says on the back, if it says what yeah, that one is. Yeah, it says what it is. It's King Penguin, that one. Possibly the publishing house. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it looks cool. Leave a note in the comments, people, if you know what that is. So there we go. We've got the paintings by Stevenson. We've got his microscope, all these great documents, even his passport. What more could you ask? Thank you, Keith. You've shown us everything. Not quite everything. Um, what do you got? One of the things T.A. Stevenson did was produce very charming cards and illustrations featuring his wife as a kind of a sea fairy. It's rather nice, I think. It says, to my wife, Anne. So you've got this little sea fairy riding on a hermit crab. Oh, nice. I think that's just so sweet. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, what's going on here? Look yeah, at this. Believe it or not, they're actually catching butterflies. Bit oh. of an excessive bit of kit to do something like that. Look at that. You were talking about conservation. I don't know about <laughs> no. sucking the butterflies out of the bushes yeah. with the... Ghostbusters th style. It, it is. Who are you going to call? <laughs> there was 20 scientists came over from the UK, but they had loads of local help, so dozens of local people kind of helping them carry out this expedition. And here we go, the scientist mm. is having a go. Firing it up <laughs> like, an old, like an old lawnmower. That's it, yeah. And he's got a machete in one hand just to finish the look. And that's to catch a butterfly. Yeah. 